All right, what's on the bench? Uh, this is a special piece of test equipment if you're building semiconductor wafers, okay? Uh, so if you've ever been around a wafer fab, you must know what these things are. It's Cascade, uh, Cascade Microtech is a big name. Uh, this is a particular product of theirs, an ACP probe, ACP probe. Um, it was sealed in the box, which broke the, broke the seal in it. Um, so what is this thing? Well, um, I'll show a picture here. So you have a wafer and in order to use that wafer, you have to saw it up and then die, what they call dicing. You, 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 you make a whole bunch of circuits on one big wafer. That's the big pie. That's the wafer. Then you have to dice it up and then package it up, wire bond it out, put it in a pack. You have to do a whole bunch of stuff before you can actually turn it on, okay? Well, wouldn't it be nice to be able to test wafers without having to saw them up, without having to do all, all that other stuff? Well, you can. You put it in what's called a, 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 a probe station. And, and this probe station allows you to go in and make electrical contact to certain things under a microscope, of course, it's very, very small stuff, but you can go in and probe things and make measurements. And um, I've done that in the past with, uh, with LEDs. Um, I actually needed to know some optical properties of LEDs. And so what I did was I had an LED and I um, sawed one in half. So imagine the die sawn as a cross section and then turned on end. You can see all the layers of the die. And then I would go in with these really, really tiny little probes and I could individually light up certain parts of the, uh, of the LED and get some information that way. Anyway, that's what this kind of thing is here. And, but this is a real special one. So let's, let's open it up. Um, cool little box. So, it uh, is just the probe. So you would take this thing and you would attach it to uh, an, a manipulator, which can move it in X, Y, and Z. I used to have some, but I sold them all. They make, I get, got good money for them. <laughs> um, but it would, this, you can make this in X, Y, and Z. And so uh, let me explain how this thing works. This is just a little uh, cap. There we go. All right, so there's a, a connector here. It looks kind of like an SMA connector, but it's not. It's super high frequency. This is a 1.85 millimeter connector. So just the connector itself is, you can't afford this thing. Um, so 1.85 uh, 1 millimeter connector. This probe was specified at 65 gigahertz. All right, so it's a 65 gigahertz probe. So what does it mean to be a probe? Is that just a little wire sticking out there? So you, here's your wafer and you're going to go along, you can probe around. No, 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 no. You can see, I'll show you some uh, pictures under the microscope here. This um, probe is actually a tiny little coax. And that little coax goes out to a forked tongue so that the coax is split in half and then two sections of the coax come in left and right. And then there's a center conductor that's the remainder part of the coax, the center conductor. And so way out at the tip are three conductors, ground, ground, and, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the uh, contact. And so you can basically go in and measure uh, a 50 ohm transmission line that's teeny, 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 tiny. And uh, you can make your spectrum analyzer or VNA measurements or whatever you need to do. So it is like a normal um, wafer probe that's normally just one big spike. It, it just making one electrical contact. This is actually a coax that allows you to control impedances all the way to the die at 65 gigahertz. And uh, <laughs> the reason I have this one is it was in the junk pile because 65 gigahertz is just no good anymore. <laughs> yeah, they make much, much faster ones now. Um, so anyway, yeah, um, pretty amazing that you can, um, Pretty amazing you can make coax that small. Pretty amazing you connect you, you can attach it to uh, a, a coax connector. That's amazing all by itself. And then somebody went in there and whittled it down and made a little <laughs> made a little contact probe out of it. 
and then it's plated and it's put into a package and I mean, it's so nice they gold plate it, right? <laughs> it probably doesn't need to be. <laughs> uh, maybe that's titanium plating, uh, but it sure looks nice, right? Anyway, there you go. Now, so I think these, oh, I don't know how much these cost new. I have no idea. I think they're around $350 or something like that. People can comment below how much how much these things cost. Maybe I'm thinking of a slower one. 65, gig, 65 gigahertz is pretty zoomy, but I don't think they're all that much because you use a whole bunch of these and they go bad on you real quick. So I think they're, they're consumable. But this particular probe comes with actual an actual graph. Okay, so this is this is actual measurements of that probe. And here is the S11 and S22 uh, of, I don't know how they measured the S22. They must have their own fancy test fixture to go the opposite way. But anyway, S11, S22, uh, you can see here we're getting uh, uh, 35 dB uh, reflection. Uh, the worst case up here around 60 gigahertz. Worst case, it's around minus 18 maybe, right? And then you can see the little wobbliness because of the uh, length of the coax stub that you have. And then here is the actual S21, uh, which is the through measurement. And you have, uh, at, at the very, very worst, it's 0.8 dB loss. Um, so yeah, that's pretty amazing. Uh, let's see here, the pitch, uh, 150 microns. Uh, the tip material is beryllium copper, connector 1.85 millimeters, 65 gigahertz. Here is the capacitance, uh, uh, 9.7 femtofarads, uh, picohenries, 4.8 picohenries of short termination, I don't know, load impedance 50 ohms. ISS. What is ISS? I don't know what that number is. Anyway, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, anything on the back? Yeah. Uh, this is the printout. So we can look at the individual numbers here. S21, worst case, is minus, minus 8, 8, so 8.82. 0.82 dB loss at worst case, and uh, yeah, most of the time it's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Yeah, really, 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 really cool stuff. So anyway, that's what you pay for. Get these cool little, uh, cool little probes and test your communication wafers and stuff. Anyway, there you go.